Hello, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that was the hidden subtext in every single Beatles song. Ladies and gentlemen, what is black and white and red all over? A zebra, after he had a run-in with an AK-47. But seriously, folks, you know, the newspaper industry is kind of in a state of decline today, but I have a feeling things might pick up for newspapers after more people play Penny Press from Asmati Games. players are essentially going to take on the roles of newspaper publishers and they're going to try to come up with the best stories the highest readership and the greatest newspaper circulation in New York City uh, around the late 19th early 20th century now, essentially there are five beats or things people want to read about there's war crime and calamity New York City politics and the human condition so players are going to keep their eye on five tracks which represent these kinds of stories now, there's also a bonus track that moves along the top, and different symbols representing each of those beats are going to be moving across that over the course of the game. You're going to sit, put stacks of stories beneath each of the beats, and they're different shapes, and that's going to be very important as the game progresses. Each player is also going to get their own kind of front page uh, player board, which has a whole section of space there with negative numbers in there, and that's going to be important later on as well. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to pull out a number of cards, and these cards are going to tell you essentially which stories go into which beats. You're going to set the stories then from the stacks into the beats, and then move up these little markers uh, just above the stories. Now, that kind of indicates the interest that the people have, the readers have, in specific stories, and it kind of tracks that and marks that. Now, what you're going to do is every player has a number of meeples, and on their turn, they're going to take special actions with those meeples. Now, the first thing you can do is you can assign any number of reporters to a specific story. You can't do several on a turn, but you can assign any number of meeples to a specific story. Now, as soon as you assign meeples to a story, that is actually going to push that marker up one space. If you have, say, two or three stories in a specific beat and they all have meeples on them, then the marker is going to go up two or three spaces. So you, there's a direct corollary between how many stories are, are kind of have reporters on them and the spaces in between the stories and that marker, meaning the more stories are being covered, the more interest in that specific topic is growing. You can also reassign a reporter. You can move one reporter from one story to another, or you can recall all your reporters. And you may not want to do that a lot, but it may be useful at some points in the game just to take all your reporters back and then try to kind of put them out there again where you think they'll be more useful. But the most important action you're going to take during the game is going to press. Now, going to press is important because that is kind of how you're going to score. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and grab all the stories that your meeples are on, provided no one else has more meeples there than you do. If they have an equal number, you're okay, but as long as you have at least, you're at least tied for the most meeples, you can take that story. You take that story, and anybody who else had meeples on there, they get a smaller little point value called the scoop value, so they get a few points. But you take your stories, and then you place them on that player board with the negative numbers. You're trying to cover up the negative numbers. So you want to cover up as much of that as you can. You score by, of course, finding where the markers were on that particular story. And so long as it's not the top story, so long as it's not a story that is out in front, any minor stories or secondary stories, you can double those points. You've got the exclusive, so you can double the points there. So you're doubling the points for that. You've got that, that the big headline story, hopefully, you've got. And you've got to make them kind of touch the top of the card. 
and you can move them sideways or or upright but they gotta fit if they can't fit then those particular stories will act as kind of negative numbers against you they go back on the board now if you can't cover every space the spaces that are still showing those negative numbers they also work against your score you're also going to take a penny which is going to track how many times you have gone to press now, once you've finished uh, going to press, you can remove the stories, you set them aside, you hang on to them, because they're going to be important for the endgame scoring, and then you draw a card. You draw one of the cards from the deck. Essentially, this card is going to have some information on it. It's going to tell you which stories to put out to adjust the beats, now that you've kind of disrupted it by going to press. It's also going to tell you which bonus tracker to move forward. It's also going to tell you you need to put an advertisement somewhere on your front page. Your advertisements are little tiny one square markers that take up one space on your uh, front page and it'll tell you where you place it. And this can be very difficult because as you're trying to place your, your, your topics, that's one more place you can't, you can't put them. And it's going to cause more problems than it's going to help. Now, the end game is triggered when one player has gone to press three times. As soon as one player goes to press three times, you flip the markers over from black to red, indicating that they don't move again. They're going to remain where they are for the rest of the game. Each player can then take one last turn. They can try to go to press to build more points. Then what's going to happen is after you've done your scoring, everybody's done the scoring for their individual going to press uh, actions, you're going to score the bonus. You're going to do end scoring, scoring that bonus track at the top. And essentially how that works is in the order of the beats, you look at how many stories you had done for each beat, and there's a number of stars printed on them. The, there's one, two, or three stars on each story, and the three is at the bottom, the one's at the top. And what you're going to do is you're going to be looking at the different uh, stars. You add up how many stars you have for that particular beat, and then you get that bonus number added to your score at the end of the game. Who has ever got the most points after endgame scoring wins Penny Press. So that is just a basic overview of Penny Press. There is also some, some variants you can throw in there. There's a few other little things going on. But generally, that's how you play the game. And one of the things that really struck me is what a beautiful production this is. It's, it's, I mean, there's not a whole lot here, but what there is looks good. The box looks good, rule book looks good, components look good, board looks good. I, I was really quite impressed with the way the game looked. Now, also going into it, with the theme, I wasn't quite sure what to make of this game. It seemed like kind of a weird theme, or at least, you know, it's, it's not something we'd seen before. So I, I was kind of skeptical, I guess you could say. But I went into it, and I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's very interesting because it's a race, and you're trying to, you're trying to find, well, okay, I, I want to go ahead and put my guys here on this story while it's moving up, but... But do I want to go to press now? Because if he goes to press, he's going to take his meeples off of that story. It's going to drop the interest in it. What should I do? What should I do? And so there's, a, there's some really critical, tough decisions. And you're trying to look, what is this guy going to do? And, and does he have enough stories covered so that he can cover his front page? And if, if not, then maybe I should go another round. So it's kind of almost a push-your-luck aspect to it. And, and, and that is really fun and really exciting. It, it's very tense. It's, it, it's kind of a race. And critically, it's a game that doesn't wear out it's welcome it's not terribly long you know i think maybe an hour tops if that and it's it, it, and so it, it, it's quick and it's fun and it's interesting and it's fairly easy to learn too it's not terribly difficult to learn but what impressed me most about penny press is just how well that theme that i was kind of skeptical of really comes through. You really feel like you are one of these newspaper barons. You're a mini William Randolph Hearst, and you're trying to get these stories out there. And, and you know people are interested in them, and you want to hurry and get them out there. And, and, but you're facing all these, 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 these other decisions and the other players and what they're going to do. And you really do get sucked into Penny Press. I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with how well this game plays, how well it integrates its theme, and how good it looks. The cards have individual news stories that are like like real news stories, and that is so much fun, particularly for me, uh, as I'm a historian by trade. And I just, I really got a kick out of this game. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, it's just fun. It's it's it, it, it really drags you in. Um, this is a great game. This is a really, really fun game. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Penny Press is buy it.
Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment here on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and extra, extra, read all about it. The Discriminating Gamer says buy it. Yeah, like you didn't see that coming. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time, and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. So, uh, 72. No. 73. No. 74. Okay, uh, 70. Yes. Ah! Mother Hubbard. That's it. He cut across there. He's on the boulevard somewhere.